comes together when we have our concept of the preludes in this work. Quite often we see them as very kinetic, uh, kinetically oriented pieces. Even, even the C major prelude, uh, you know, this continuous flow. Of we have this constant flow of notes which, which makes us want to fall into a nice regular path. But the fact of the matter is that the whole concept of the prelude from before Bach's time was as something originally improvised. Uh, the early, one of the earliest uh, versions of a C major prelude uh, was by Couperin, and it was literally just whole notes of these various harmonies. And who knows, I mean, Bach could have easily uh, written his first prelude that way too, trusting in us to know that we would roll them expressively, the chords, et cetera, et cetera. But in any case, that application of freedom is something I want to touch on right now. It reminds me of the times we would be on From the Top. Anybody ever hear that radio program? I would be uh, accompanying our young guests, and let's say they'd be playing some Vinyovsky piece, uh, and they'd get to the cadenza, and it'd be very exciting, and they would continue on in an exciting way. And I would tell them, literally, a cadenza, or virtually any, any place in a piece of music where a composer does not have you coordinating with an orchestra, with, a, with a, an accompanist, it's the way of the composer saying, time is absolutely all in your hands. The flow of time, our perception of reality is completely yours. It is your responsibility, it is your freedom. And I took this, uh, I took this quite literally, I mean, even, even so far as uh, probably the most kinetically inspired composer, I would say, would be Beethoven. Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't, want, uh, you wouldn't want to have a, an improvisatory sense of dynamics, or he's like this. Mm -hmm. 